Diode laser cutters and engravers have had three big problems. And over the last two years, all of those problems have been fixed, except for one. We're gonna talk about this machine right here that finally fixes all three of those problems. So the first version of these laser diodes, I'm gonna call version 1.0, they were kind of cheaply constructed, kind of rickety. Some of the first stuff you saw from Otour, things I was reviewing a couple of years ago, they did a good job, but they really highlighted those three big problems. First was that build quality. I mean, they got the job done, but they kind of felt like a toy and sometimes the alignment wasn't right and things were just messed up. So that was a big issue. And second was air assist. And this is especially true if you're doing any type of cutting. And the third problem was the fact that these were all open gantry designs, meaning there was no enclosure. So fast forward about another year and we get to version 2.0 of these laser diodes where those first two problems of build quality as well as air assist get fixed. These are nicer machines that we're starting to see from Xtool as well as Atomstack and even Creality. Their overall construction is great and pretty much all of them now include an air assist that's integrated directly into the laser module itself. But those machines still had one big problem that really made it hard for me to recommend it, especially if you are in an enclosed environment, the fact that they still didn't have an enclosure. Which brings us to version 3.0 of these machines and this machine right here. So drum roll please, this is the, ugh, if I don't drop it, we create vision all-in-one laser cutter and engraver. And the all-in-one aspect of this is really key here. Now I'm gonna give you a demo of kind of how this works and all the features that it comes with, but be sure and hang around to the very end because there's actually a feature that I haven't seen on any other machine. And that includes much more expensive CO2 machines that we're gonna talk about at the end. Full disclosure, this is a product feature, not a product review, which means that we create is actually paying me to make this video. So this isn't a formal review. And I wanna be real clear of that from the get-go. So I know before I decide to go in and actually purchase something that's on pre-order. I love to see as much about the machine as I possibly can, even though it might be coming from the company or it might be a paid feature. It's just really nice to see what you're actually going to get. So that is my goal for this video. Now, not only does this have an enclosure, but this entire thing can actually move up and down and that is how you get focus with your diode laser. It kind of reminds me of this crazy little droid from Star Wars that they had on the show Andor last year. And he's quickly became one of my favorite. R2, yeah, so not my total favorite. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get back into the, uh, the review. And also try to give you a body at some point. And the ability for this to move gives you a really nice thickness for your Z axis. It's 140 millimeters without the laser bed, so the slats at the bottom, or it's 100 millimeters if you have those included. And the reason that it moves is so that the laser can focus depending on the material thickness that you are working with. I'm not totally sure how this is actually focusing. Now it does have two red dots that slowly get closer and closer to each other. And then they are basically one dot once it's focused. That's something that you see on Galvo machines if you are manually focusing it. So I believe it's doing something with that. I'm not seeing like a touch probe or any other type of sensor in there to be able to get focus. But from all my testing, that focus has been spot on. Now I mentioned the work bed. A lot of times you're gonna have a honeycomb work Work bed. This one actually has the slat design. Wow, my voice is messed up. Sorry, I've got a cold, so my voice is all over the place. Your voice won't crack on Friday. Slat design, which I find to be a little bit easier to work with. It's gonna give you some bigger slots to be able to pull the material down through. Uh, and so I like that that is built directly into the machine. And on the safety side of things, this is really the first diode machine that I would be fine with leaving inside, as long as I had a way to vent the exhaust, which is coming out the back. It's got the great safety features that we see in the larger CO2 machines. The big one being the fact that if you open this up, it's gonna kill the power to the laser and it's going to stop running. That's basically a must have if you're gonna be working in an environment with kids or just folks that aren't familiar with how these machines work. The top is actually coated. That is why it looks kind of orange when you look inside of it. That's real similar to the safety glasses that you normally get with these diode machines. Now, all of the safety factors mean that this is a class one laser versus the class four that you're gonna find with the open gantry style designs like the X-Tool D1 or the Atom Stack or Creality or Sculpt Fun or all the other ones that you've seen on this channel. Now, they are marketing this as an all-in-one machine and there's really four big features that they've kind 
kind of integrated into this. The first is air assist. So going back to one of those initial problems that we had with laser diodes. So that is the air assist pump. It's pretty similar to a lot of the pumps you might have seen before. I do like that it has these nice rubber feet so it doesn't walk all over your workspace. But as you can see here with the connections, this is actually wired directly into the machine. Meaning that when you start a cut or engrave, it will automatically turn the air assist on. Then when it's done, it'll turn it off. Now that's super similar to what you find with CO2 machines, but normally not something you're gonna find with the open gantry designs. And in terms of the performance of the air assist, it does a great job. Now, another problem that the all-in-one nature of this kind of helps solve is the fact that rotaries are usually pretty hard to work with open gantry style designs, especially if we're gonna be doing tumblers, because that means that the laser head needs to be pretty high off the ground. Other companies fix this by basically raising the entire machine off the ground. A lot of times it's like extension feet that you have to screw onto the bottom. But what's annoying about that is if you wanna flip it back to doing just normal engraving or cutting, you have to take all of those feet off. Since this thing can go up and down, you're not going to run into that with this. And in fact, it actually has the connection for it right here in the back for the rotary. I didn't set up the rotary for this video, but I do plan on doing a follow-up and I'll include it for that. Now, another problem that the all-in-one nature of this helps to solve is positioning in that this actually includes a camera. You can see it is right here and this integrates directly into the software. For those open gantry designs, a lot of manufacturers have started to provide cameras, but it's not directly integrated. You got to clamp it on weird and it's just awkward to get the camera to work. And the last problem that the all-in-one nature of this solves is the fact that you need an enclosure, but we've already talked about that. It comes with this nice enclosure. Some of the other specs for this machine so this is a 20 watt laser. Uh, this isn't at the highest end that I've seen. So we've started to see some machines come up to 40 watts, but 20 actually is a pretty good sweet spot, especially if you're gonna be using this mostly for thinner materials. And if you're actually going to be doing engraving, the more powerful your laser diode gets, the thicker the laser dot, meaning that the resolution of your engraving isn't gonna be as high. So I think 20 is a good sweet spot that they've stuck with this machine. It's got a max speed of 600 millimeters per second. That's pretty much right in line with the other open gantry designed. I've noticed just from using it, even when I'm running it at the top speeds, there's not a ton of movement with the machine uh, just because there's a lot more to this. The outside body of this is all sheet metal and the internal frame is metal as well. So this thing really is rock solid. Now the machine is really only half the story. The second part is the software that you're going to use to control it. So WeCreate has created their own custom software called WeCreate Make It! Exclamation point. What I like about it is it's not web-based, so it runs local on your machine. It's just something you're going to download. I'm connected to the machine just by USB, but there's also a Wi-Fi connection that you can use as well on the back. Now, the next video that I'm gonna do is going to be a full walkthrough of the software, and we're gonna go through a few demo projects. But I just wanted to give you a quick look at what this looks like. So you pretty much have all of the normal controls that you would wanna find in terms of being able to add things to the canvas. Um, you can see right here that I already have a image of what is inside the machine right now. I actually have a piece of wood that I have right here. So that is what it's looking at. I'm gonna flip this around so that you can see see that it will get a new image and you just hit refresh right here to get that. Now you can see that it is upside down and you'll also autofocus it from here as well. It actually already is focused down. I can just add a quick rectangle and then you're gonna get all of the controls that you would normally need in terms of if you want to engrave it, fill engrave it or cut it out. And then if you need to do different types of cuts and engraves on the same piece of material, you're going to have multiple layers that you can add in as well. But the one feature that I mentioned at the beginning that I haven't seen on any other machine isn't actually with the machine itself, it's with the software. And that is, if I come over here to fill engrave, meaning this is going to turn this into like a solid rectangle, right here at the bottom, they're giving you this nice preview. I harp on the fact that you always want to do test anytime you're messing with a new machine and new material to find out the settings that are going to work best for you. They basically have done a lot of that legwork already for you and they're giving you an image of what this would look like at different speeds as well as powers. And I can actually just click on it and actually something that I'm just now realizing what's in here that I didn't know. Um, there's a little blue square going around each of these. So I bet if I click, so let's say I want to do this fast. So let's go 250 at 60% power. Yep that adjusts the power and the speed settings right here. That's super slick. A lot of times you'll have material libraries where it has those settings in there, but being able to have it visually and then being able to automatically update your settings, they're really making this easy. And they have this for other materials as well. All right, I've got everything connected. I'm gonna come up here to start. 
It's gonna give me a preview and tell me it's only going to take 24 seconds. I'm gonna hit send, and then you're gonna hit the only physical button on this machine right here to actually start it. So you can't start it from the computer. Again, that's another nice safety feature that you're gonna find on machines like Glowforge, where you physically have to interact with the machine to get it to start. But let's just say you have a bunch of kids running around like I do, and they wanna look inside, they open it up while it's running, the laser actually stopped. The fans are still running in the back, so it's got exhaust that's running out the back, but it's going to stop the laser, which is great. Now, I can restart it by just hitting that button again, and it's going to finish up the job. And then once it's done, it basically goes back to the home position. So for this, the Z axis is gonna go all the way up to the top to give you the most room to get stuff in and out. So all of the pre-order information and links are down in the description. I encourage you guys to check this out. I would also love to know what your thoughts are on this style machine, if this is something that you would want to pick up. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.